everybody. It's Alice Slagle, the Director of Student Activities, again, here with your Mindfulness Monday. So today, we are in my living room because I wanted you to see my inspiration wall. So the first thing I wanted to tell you about an inspiration wall is that this whole installation on my wall literally cost maybe $10. So um, an inspiration wall doesn't have to cost a lot of money. Um, it's just a few white frames with some vintage colored paper. And then we printed, my husband and I printed some quotes that we appreciate on that paper and then put it in the frames and hung them on our wall. So um, during this COVID-19 crisis time, if you feel inspired, if you want to um, put an installation on your wall to remind you of some of your favorite quotes or your favorite images. I encourage you to do that. Uh, it's not a lot of money and it could bring you a lot of joy. So um, I wanted to show you mine just to hopefully inspire you to build your own. And I did want to read a few of the quotes on the wall for you that are some of my favorites. So we're going to start with this one. This is a quote by Elizabeth Gilbert. Um, from her book, Eat, Pray, Love. And I hope there's not a glare or too much of a glare. I'll just kind of turn it slightly. This is the quote from Eat, Pray, Love. And it says, when I get lonely these days, I think, so be lonely. Learn your way around loneliness. Make a map of it. Sit with it for once in your life. Welcome to the human experience. But never again use another person's body or emotions as a scratching post for your own unfulfilled yearnings. I'll read it one more time. When I get lonely these days, I think, so be lonely. Learn your way around loneliness. Make a map of it. Sit with it for once in your life. Welcome to the human experience. But never again use another person's body or emotion as a scratching post for your own unfulfilled yearnings. Again, it's Elizabeth Gilbert, and that is Eat, Pray, Love. I'm going to slowly and carefully slide it back on the wall. And then we're going to move to another one. I really like this one, too. This is by um, David Foster Wallace. He wrote the book Infinite Jest, which is like a thousand pages. <laughs> But everybody is identical in their secret unspoken belief that way deep down, they are different from everyone else. And that's really an interesting quote. Everybody is identical in their secret unspoken belief that way deep down, they are different from everyone else. That makes you feel a little less alone, doesn't it? At least that's what it means to me. I'll put it back up on the wall. And then I won't take this one down, but hopefully you can see the circle. Um, a circle means a lot of different things to a lot of different cultures. But to me, it means enlightenment and unity. And a circle is such a simple thing in nature. But it's so interesting. So I like to have a circle on my wall just to remind me of that enlightenment and unity. And then the last one I want to share, and it's probably my favorite, is an Alice in Wonderland quote. My name is Alice, so I've always been attracted to Alice in Wonderland and different um, art and quotes that have to do with Alice in Wonderland. So this one says, I knew who I was this morning, but I've changed a few times since then. And I think that is so true. We're constantly changing. Every moment, every breath we take is a little bit different than the moment and the breath before. We're always changing. It's the law of impermanence. Life is full of change. So I love that quote. I knew who I was this morning, but I've changed a few times since then. So we're constantly, constantly exploring who we are as people. I think that's an amazing quote. And then the last thing I wanted to show you is this. I'm going to turn it a little bit to the side. Sorry, my dog is barking. This is a piece of art that was done by a CBC student a few years back. It is a drawing of Ganesh, 
So Ganesh is the Hindu god that is the remover of obstacles. So for a lot of us, we're going through some obstacles right now, a lot of challenges with COVID-19, taking online classes, maybe homeschooling children, um, that kind of thing. So I wanted to show you this as inspiration that we can get through it. Um, so if you want to think of an elephant, if you want to think of Ganesh, if you just want to think of something that makes you feel strong, makes you feel like you can overcome the obstacle, I encourage you to do that every morning when you wake up. Because we can do it. We can make it past this. And then I just wanted to end with a few light stretches. Sorry, my dog is barking, if you can hear her barking. But some light stretches just to help us feel powerful throughout our day today. So the first one I wanted to do is just a power pose. So I want you to strike your favorite power pose. For me, it's Wonder Woman. I put my hands on my hips, I open my chest a little bit more, I reach up through the crown of my head, I, I'm going to close my eyes, and I'm going to imagine everything, every image that makes me feel powerful. Then I'm going to breathe. So think about what makes you feel powerful, what makes you feel strong. I want you to imagine those things right now as you strike your power pose. So again, my favorite power pose is Wonder Woman, hands to the hips, nice open chest, nice tall spine. For you, it might be taking your arms out into a powerful like um, star pose. If that's what makes you feel powerful, then do that. Take your arms out, open your body, feel strong. Awesome. And then close your eyes and just think of everything powerful. Lightning bolts, thunder, strong pillars on a house or a church. Some of us, the American flag makes us feel powerful. Some of us, it might be a really tall tree or a really high mountain. Think about the things that make you feel powerful. Keep those images in your mind. Now take a deep breath and strike a different power pose. So if you were doing the outstretched pose, go into the Wonder Woman pose. Or take your arms up and just be really tall like a tree. Again, whatever makes you feel powerful. Keep breathing and for another moment, imagine those powerful images. be an elephant, it could be an eagle, it could be the ocean. All of those things that make you feel really strong and really good. And things in nature, things in your house, all those wonderful things. One more deep breath. Awesome. And we're going to move on to some back bends. So back bends are another thing that make us, can make us feel really powerful. It also strengthens our back and strengthens our core. So if you're a person who have, who's not really practiced back bends a lot, I'm going to have you start here. You're going to put your hands to your low back. Spread your fingers really wide, your palms really wide. Roll your shoulders up and back, and then pull your shoulder blades together. Again, your hands are on your very, very low back of the sacrum area. And then you're slowly going to start to lift your chest. And as you lift your chest, let your chin rock toward the ceiling, opening your throat. Push your hips gently forward. Find strength in your abdominal muscles and your back muscles. Coming into this supported back bend. Take a few more breaths here. And then slowly begin to come up. Let your hands drop. Take a nice deep breath. Go ahead and let your arms come up next to you. Drop through your shoulders. Spread your fingers really, really, really wide. And then come back into it again. Bring your hands down. Place your palms to your low back. Spread your fingers really wide. Open your chest. Pull your shoulder blades together. And then slowly rock into a supported back bend. Again, elbows coming together, chin can come up toward the ceiling to expose the throat. Breathe as you hold. 
and then slowly come back up. Use your abdominal muscles. And then your head comes up and let your arms fall next to you. Awesome. Take a nice deep breath. We're gonna do one more back bend. If you prefer to do the one with your hands on, on your low back again, you totally can. This one's a little bit more difficult. We're gonna take our arms up. Then you're gonna let your pinkies come inward as your palms face backward. And you're slowly gonna let your arms frame your ears as you move into a standing back bend without that additional back support. That's why it's a little bit more difficult. You may, be, you may not be able to come quite as far and that's fine. Let your hips move forward. Use your abdominal muscles. Use your back muscles. Breathe. And then slowly come up. Drop your arms down. Take a nice deep breath. Now to release the back bend, because you are using your abdominal muscles and your back muscles, and some of us might not be used to that. We want to take care of our bodies, so just do a nice slow swing. Swing through your arms, swing through your waist and your hips. A little bend to the knees, just swing around. You can let your head fall if you'd like to. We are talking about elephants before in Ganesh. You can imagine that your arms are a big elephant trunk swinging around. Very light in the back. Very light in the arms, light in the shoulders. And then come back up. The other thing you can do, especially if you're really pulling those shoulder blades together to release your shoulder blades, slowly give yourself a nice little hug. So hug yourself and then let your head drop into the hug. Deep breath and release. Nice work, everybody. Thank you so much for being here with me today. I really appreciate you tuning into Mindfulness Monday. All right. Let's go have a great week, everybody.